Hey, what's up you guys? You're watching Team APS, Paul here. And in today's video, as you guys can see, I'm going to be profiling my Zephyr deck. So it's a deck that I kind of just got interested in on a whim. I didn't want to play Pendulum Magicians. And I also just for some reason wasn't like really tied to like Metal Foes and the other Pendulum decks. So this is the one that I went with. I don't normally play Pendulum decks, but this one just spoke to me for some reason. And it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's got a lot of crazy combos. It doesn't feel like it's like, you know, liable to be hit on the ban list, which speaking of ban lists, I'm recording this before the ban list drops. So um, if it drops like today or the day after this goes up, you'll know why I'll update this profile with new stuff. But um, this is how I'm running the deck now. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. It's got lots of combos. It's got a pretty high ceiling. I, I, wouldn't, I will not say I'm an expert on the deck, but I'm pretty happy with this build. So before we jump in, remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. We've got lots of other deck profiles going up um, over the next couple of days. So should be fun. Anyway, starting off, we've got Zephrath. So Zephrath is your crucial monster because he can send any Zephyr monster from your deck to the extra deck face up, and uh, it takes that monster's scale. So ideally, you can make him a scale 7. That's usually what you'll do, but you can also make him a scale 1. So he can match whatever your other scale is, and then that'll allow you to pendulum summon any of your Zephyr monsters because they'll all fall between the you know threshold of two and six um it also allows you to quickly just fill your extra deck up in general which is good because that means you have targets to get back with like zephyr wendy just more things to pendulum summon out once you've got your extra monster zones opened up more things to use for odd eyes vortex dragons negation just plenty of things like that so you want to see this as soon as possible and you usually will because even if you don't open with it there's like you know, terraforming Oracle Zephyr and Zephyr Providence. So plenty, plenty, plenty of ways to see it. And for the other Zephyrs, we have three copies of Zephrenu and um, two Zephraxes. These are the Yang Zing monsters. Uh, Zephrenu, when it's pendulum summoned or just special summoned from the deck by like another Yang Zing, doesn't happen in this deck, but figured I'd mention it. Um, it will get you any Yang Zing Speller Trap card or Zephyr Speller Trap card. So we're running three different Zephyr Traps, and that's normally what you'll be searching with it, though you can search, you know, Oracles or, like, Providence, things like that. It's useful, too, because uh, it has high defense. You can kind of sit on it as a wall. It's level 6, which means if you get two of them out, you can actually overlay them into things like Photon Strike Bouncer, very handy. And, um... Also, it's scale 7, so sending it with Zephrath is usually very easy to do. It gives Zephrath its high scale, and your low scale can be something like Gate 0, and then you've got a really easy Pendulum scale to work with. Um, Zephra Zephraxy, that's Zephrath, it was Zephraxy, um, doesn't have a particularly, like, it's not always that important of an effect, but when it gets Pendulum summoned, it can make any monster a tuner. And if you summon them both together, you can actually put Zephrenu's effect as like chain link one and have this effect as chain link two, so they can't use something like Ash Blossom to stop your search. Still, though, making a monster tuner is handy because these two together make level nine. So that's easy access to stuff like Chalfing. And you can also do other synchros that way. So, yeah, that's it for the Yang Zing stuff. Then we have the two Stellar Knights, uh, Zephraxitin and Zephrathubin. They can pop face up or face down monsters, respectively, and they're both level four. Then you finally have Zephyr Wendy, which can recover any of your face-up Zephyr monsters in the extra deck. Kind of allows you to cheat Master Rule 4 in a way because you're able to just recover them to your hand. So that way you can Pendulum Summon out more than just the stuff like that fits into your extra monster zones. These make up the Zephyrs of the deck. Um, and what I like about this is that unlike most you know naming conventions, this actually is a Zephyr deck. There's a lot of Zephyr monsters in it. Pretty cool. Okay, now we have our generic little Pendulum Engines. Uh, everyone's favorite Astrograph, Sorcerer, and Stargazer. Astrograph can send itself and then summon Stargazer from the deck to make Electromite a little bit easier to use without using a normal summon. And, of course, uh, it can trigger when anything gets destroyed. In fact, it destroys itself to summon Stargazer, so contribute. It can, you can use this and then use another one in your hand, and it, it's crazy. But, yeah, Astrograph does Astrograph things, searches more copies of cards, Usually it'll be like another copy of Zephrath. That's the thing that gets destroyed the most in this deck, unlike um, some other Pendulum decks. But yeah, and it's level 7, which can be handy for um, making a few other few other related plays. But anyway, um, yeah, so that engine. Then the next favorite engine, the Dark Worm engine. So it's two Dark Worms and a Gate 0. Um, some people like to run like one Worm, one Gate 0, two Worm, two Gate 0, three Worm, two, you know. 
lots of ways to do it. This is how I chose to, um, I tend to, the gate zero does come in handy for, you know, the combo with like Meteor Burst and Absolute Dragon and stuff, but I didn't feel like I needed to run two. It could be a bit cloggy. Um, and I didn't run multiple Dark Worms because usually I'll see a way to pitch it to the grave. So I got run Terraforming, so Ravine's easier to see. And then we have Destrudo, who is key to many combos. You'll want to summon him, use him to make Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon, get back the Gate Zero we were just talking about, and overlay those in Absolute Dragon, which can then get you Vortex Dragon. You can also make other Synchros, and because this deck has Oracle of Zephra, you will actually be like rewarded somewhat for making Synchros, so that's neat. And finally, the best part of any Yu-Gi-Oh! format in the last couple years, the Hand Traps. So we have two Ghost Ogre, three Ash Blossom. I really would like to fit probably like a third Ghost Ogre in here, and there's plenty of things I could take out, probably will take out. So uh, yeah, these are just the Hand Trap Brigade. They're the protection. They do the thing. Um, there's actually a cool thing that you can do with them with Oracle of Zephra to stack them on top of your deck and then draw them with Stardust Charge Warrior. So you can actually guarantee that you see specific Hand Traps. That's always nice, isn't it? Uh, now for the spells. Triple Zephyr Providence searches any Zephyr card in your deck, and even spells and traps, and it can also protect your Zephyrs from destruction. Pretty cool if your opponent tries to use Wavering Eyes or something to destroy your scales. Have a little bit of protection. Um, Oracle of Zephyr searches any Zephyr monster when it's activated, assuming it's not, you know, Twin Twister or something. And then also it gets additional effects whenever you do, like, whenever you use a Zephyr for a Synchro Summon or for a... Um, Z summon, you'll get some effects. So what's handy here is if you synchro summon with a Zephra, you'll be able to take a monster from your deck and put it on top of your deck. And if you make Stardust Charge Warrior, um, you can actually draw the card that you put on top if you just make the chain links right. Um, so that's very handy. <clears throat> then there's Dragon Ravine, which is used to pitch Dark Worm and Destrudo to the graveyard. And we have three copies of Terraforming to search all these wonderful field spells out from the deck just quite consistent this deck has so many ways of seeing what it needs then we have two dragon shrines and a foolish burial i just want to see as many ways as possible to send destrudo send dark worm so these are just doing their job and then finally we've got some traps these are the three main Zephyr traps. Well, one's a Yang Zing one. So Nine Pillars works especially well with um, your Zephrenu because you'll be able to negate your opponent's card, shuffle it back in the deck, which is super helpful because shuffling things back is generally better than destroying them. And then you get to destroy your Zephrenu, who will then search. So quite handy. Uh, we've also got Divine Strike and Zephyr War. So Divine Strike is just kind of your Omni Negate. You banish a face-up Zephyr in your extra deck, and you usually have plenty. And then Zephyr War, you pop a Zephyr card in one of your opponent's cards. What's cool is if you have two Zephyrs in your scales, you can actually use this from your hand, so it's like a hand trap. And thanks to Zephyr Providence, you can usually actually save your own Zephyr cards and your opponent will be the only person to lose cards. So that's really handy. These are the only three traps we run. Um, this deck can't make fields quite as strong as Pendulum Magicians. So the idea is you make a field that's pretty strong and then you have these negations and stuff behind it. So. That's kind of the appeal here. They're easy to search with Zephrenu. Now for the extra deck, we've got two copies of Electromite. Um, only two. I don't have three. I don't have that much money. Um, this card's insane. I can't say enough about it. You know, you get to fuel your extra deck. You get free draws. You get to open plays, open up zones. All kinds of wild, wonky BS that maybe shouldn't exist, but it's neither here nor there. So anyway, yeah. Two of him. And then we have Zephyr Metaltron. So some decks run this already, but ironically, because it's a Zephyr monster, it can actually be protected by Zephyr Providence. Random nice interaction there. And um, I usually just use it when I'm trying to send off Absolute Dragon to make my free Vortex. So I'll use like Eyes Absolute Dragon and um, Electromite to make this guy. And Borload is just an out. It's the best Link monster for that particular purpose. You can deal with a lot of troublesome boss monsters and things by just taking them. So that's all for the links. Then we have Synchros, Stardust Charge Warrior. Like I said, um, this works extremely well with Oracle of Zephyr. When it's Synchro Summoned, you get to draw a card. So what you do is you um, set its effect as Chain Link 1 and Oracle of Zephyr's effect as Chain Link 2. So Oracle of Zephyr will put a card from your deck on top and then Stardust Charge Warrior will immediately draw it. 
Like I said, that's extremely useful to use with hand traps. Um, then we have Metaphys Horus. You'll actually be able to get um, both its effect monster and pendulum monster effects, uh, which is great. You can negate a card in the field. Negating diagram permanently is quite nice and forcing your opponent to give you a monster is cool as well. And then we have Yazi, who uh, can't be targeted and can actually destroy your opponent's cards along with your Yang Zings. And it's kind of a recurring thing because you'll just keep pendulum summoning them back. Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon, really just there to summon um, your Gate Zero and use it to make Absolute Dragon. Then we have Chao Feng, who can actually summon your Worm Monsters from the deck whenever your opponent's monsters get destroyed. That's extremely helpful. Uh, you won't, you don't even have to like worry that much about getting the whole you know monster type negation thing. But if you do, it's really handy. You can like negate, say, Earth Monsters. Um, not super relevant right now, but. It works, and then when it gets destroyed, you get to search a tuner to your hands. You can search a hand trap. It's always nice. Then, oh, and I'm not running um, Cloud Castle and XX Saber Gotems. Those are also popular cards in this deck, but I chose not to use them because I didn't feel like they came up enough, the opportunities to use them. And so also no true King of Calamities. Then we have some Xyz, Absolute Dragon, which is really just here to summon Vortex Dragon. And um, Photon Strike Bouncer and Constellar Ptolemy M7. You have Zafrenu. It comes out a lot. They're both level 6 or rank 6 monsters, so they're easy to make. This is good for kind of just securing the board. It has monster negations. And this can bounce cards, so it's like an out. And then we have two other Xyz. Tornado Dragon, extremely useful against Pendulum decks. And Maguska for just sort of stalling and then using your link monsters. And that is it for the deck. So... Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I've really been liking this deck. Like I said, this was recorded pre-ban list whenever that is, so I will update it as necessary when the ban list itself gets revealed. Uh, let me know what you think. Give me some feedback on the deck. If you've been playing it in combos or cool techs I might have missed. All right, that's going to be it. Thumbs if you liked the video, sub if you loved it, and I will see you guys in the next one.